Oh, Assalamu Alaikum everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today the car that I have for you is Bangladesh's trending car or the hot cake of Bangladesh. And yeah, it is an Italian beast. So today I am going to do a full review of the 2023 Ferrari 296 GTB. This is the most famous car of Bangladesh in the moment. And this is my humble request to you to subscribe to my channel and this is not for me this is for you so you guys can see what is the specification and what is all about a ferrari that's in our country so let's start the full review by the front fascia of the car but before that let me show you the key so ferrari has developed a lot and ferrari is the best italian brand in my opinion so look at the key you have the ferrari logo to be honest it's a full ferrari logo ferrari written the horse the italian flag and on the back, you have 296 GTB written, your lock and unlock with your frunk opening. And now, let's show you the car's front fascia. The Ferrari 296 is the latest Ferrari, and because it's the latest Ferrari, Ferrari had to make something that is comfortable for everyone to buy and use. So now, as you guys know, everything's going electric. So Ferrari had to make a hybrid or an electric car to pass emissions, and law in bangladesh it doesn't matter as as much but in other countries and the manufacturing country it does so that's why ferrari had to make a plug-in hybrid with a smaller engine than their normal cars and this is their answer and one thing that i want to say before starting the review every manufacturer should see how to make hybrid cars from ferrari because they did a brilliant job now i'm going to get inside and turn on the headlights of the vehicle so here we get inside. And close the door. I know they wanna come and separate us, but they can't do us nothing. You're the one I want, and I'm a continue loving. And you're considered wifey, and I'm considered husband. And I'm always be there for you. Put on the brake, pressing the start button. So, this is with the car's full light, and then this is with the car's hazard. This is with the car's high beam. This is with the high beam off. Now, I'm going to come outside for showing you guys the headlights. So, here we open the door, and here we come outside. So, now if we come and show you the headlights. When they made the car's headlights, they had to design the full front end of the car. And when you know Ferrari, whatever they make, it's a piece of art. Not just a car, it's a piece of art and it's a collective car. And that is one rare feature and there's another rare feature of this car. That is, it is one of one in Bangladesh. So let's look at the car's headlight first. So you have the main light here. Then you have the high beam of the car at the bottom. Then you have the hazards slash your daytime morning lights on the side that makes this car look much more aggressive and nicer at the same time. If you guys come a little closer, there is an opening here so that can feed air and get it out from the wheel. That's how this car looks much nicer and much aggressive from the side angle. And then now you can see the determining lights that's there. Now if we come back and let's come to the car's front fascia. So you have four sensors at the front, as you can see, that are placed, but you have opening here and on the other side so the air can feed inside here and come out the wheel well. In the center, there is a big opening that feeds air to the bottom of the car and then it gets out from the diffuser. As you can see here, this is the opening part. It gets all the air forced inside there and goes in bottom of the car and comes out from the diffuser. And then if we go up from there, because the front of this car is very aggressively designed and it is very pretty at the same time. You have the Ferrari logo right here, as you can see. You have the Italian flag, the horse, Ferrari written. And then if we come on the front of the car and especially the front you can see how aerodynamic it's shaped so all the air can come flush through and get down the mirror and on top of the mirror so it can get maximum performance that's pretty much it for the front you have rain sensing wipers that is controlled by the steering buttons and that's pretty much it it is a very nice front now let's see if the ferrari 296 gtb is practical or not 
So for opening the front of the car, you have to do it from the key or the button inside. So if you press on the key twice, the front of the car is opening. It actually opened and then you have a button that you have to slide like this and then the hydraulic struts are going to get it up. So as the Ferrari 296 GTB is mid-engine, the front is fully empty. So in the front, you just have your fans for getting air inside to the back. But at the front, you have maximum storage. That's why Ferrari decided to put a storage area here. So you have more than 260 liters. If I be exact, there's 265 liters here. And this is the first bag. It says Ferrari 296 GTB with this nice leather strap. This is actually the things for opening your wheel on, on that side. This is your first aid kit with Ferrari written right there. And whatever Ferrari you buy, your specifications are always going to be on the front. And then you have a light placement here, and that's pretty much it. Now if we come here, you have the Ferrari uh, verification here, that it's a real Ferrari and the paint is real. And then you have your 1% light there. So now if I close the front of the car and press it, there it's going to close. And why did I call it the front? We normally call a storage area the boot, but the boot is at the back, so B. Why did I call this the front? Took the F and added the front. So this is the front of the Ferrari that is pretty good and it, you have enough storage. Now let's look at the side profile. So now we are at the side profile of the Ferrari 296 GTB. So this is the brand new vehicle that Ferrari released for their base car. And finally Ferrari is at the hybrid statement and this is a great hybrid car. Let's check out the wheels. So the wheels that come with this car are optional extra and it suits the car a lot. So these wheels are Brixton and the wheel size are 245-35CR20s. You have carbon ceramic brakes at the front that thickness are 15.7 inches. And how will you recognize it's carbon ceramics? If you guys come closer, you can see the discs are different. It's little crack crack and that's why it is called the carbon ceramics. And these are better brakes for track use and stuff and the brake calipers are in yellow. You have Ferrari written and Brembo written right there because Ferrari and Brembo are together. And the Ferrari center caps in yellow as well. You have 001 suspension with coil springs at the front. If we come to the Ferrari badge, the Ferrari badge is really expensive and now Ferrari is minimizing the badges because this badge is made out of fully aluminum and it's really expensive to buy. Behind it, when you unlock the car, and then it slowly, powerly unfolds the mirror. And when it comes to the mirror, the mirror is not here. It's placed at the door so the aerodynamic part can be open and the air can pass through from the top and the bottom. And if you see the mirror, it's pretty simple. You just have your hazard light here and it is in gloss black for this part and red on the top. And the A pillar of the car is also in black so the car looks much more nicer and aggressive at the same time. Now if we can look at the door handles, the door handles are pretty nice. So for opening the door handles, you have to press your hand inside-wards and there the door opens. And you obviously have frameless doors. And then for closing the door, there that closes. You have another button here for your keyless entry. That's this, and this is for opening the door. Now if we come down, you have this very nice side skirt that actually makes the car look much nicer. And it is actually much higher than a Jaguar XJL. So it has better ground clearance than that car. Now if we come to the back, you have this vent. These are actually the oil coolers and the intakes for the engine because all the air that are coming from the front of the car that's slowly getting inside this trap and going inside the engine so it can ventilate the engine. And then if we come to the back wheels, it's the same wheels but the rear wheels are much thicker and much bigger at the same time. The rear wheels are 305 35CR20s. That is also pretty good. And the rear brakes are six pistons and it's carbon ceramics. And the rear brake thickness is 14.2 inches with multi-link suspension and coil springs. And look at that curve from the back end. So if you look at the side profile right now, you can see how this curves act up and then comes down here. And the, all the air that's coming inside goes inside this so it can cool the exhaust of the car that gets really hot. So there's two things on either side. One is on this side, one is on that side. So what is this? For that, I have to unlock the car. Let's get the key out. Car is unlocked and then I have to get inside the car and open for the both of the sides. So on this side is the plug-in hybrid charger. So as you know, this is a plug-in hybrid. So for charging the car, 
you have to charge the car from this side and there you can charge the car and all the details about how long it's going to charge are going to be written and that's it for this side and before i go to the other side and show you the car's fuel tank let me tell you one more thing just look at the side profile of this car the designer of ferrari did a very good job at it because it's such a good car when you look at it from the side angle and the front now let's see if it's the same from the back and then for the fuel tank you have to open it from the inside and there's a button so one button is for your fuel and one button is for your charging socket so if i press this and hold it there that opens up and then let's close the door so this is the fuel tank of the car and for accessing it you have to just open the fuel tank and it is actually capless so if you just press it you can see the fuel goes in when you take the thing out it goes back up pretty nice right and that's going to be it for the side profile now i'm going to show you the car's rear and this is where this looks the best so for showing you guys the rear of the car i'm going to get inside and turn on the rear tail lights so here we get inside first we're going to unlock the car and then let's get inside the vehicle so foot on the brake pressing the start button there the car turns on and it's on full electric mode right now because it has full charge so this is with the full light with the rear fog this is with the reverse and the hazard and i'm going to put it back to park and show you guys the rear tail lights so here we come outside the car and i'm going to leave the door a little bit open and let's show you the rear tail lights so the rear tail lights are really nice on this car in my opinion you have the straight line that is your uh, brake light that when you press on the brake it illuminates more but it's your parking light as well this is your rear fog and reverse and this is your hazard very nice design right yes sir so if you come on top you have the rear tail lights then you have this nice black surrounding and this is actually open at the center so it can get the hot air out from the engine bay then if you come closer to that side you have the ferrari logo on the top and you have the horse at the bottom and then if we go straight up you can see it all the way remains to the other side and then if we come to the bottom portion this parts are open because the exhaust manifold gets really hot so the hot air can come out but you have the exhaust right here with the center pipe single tip exhaust now let's come to the diffuser because the diffuser is really aggressive you have the backup camera there and then you have the number plate slot and the whole diffuser is really aggressive and it is very aerodynamic it can move by itself from the inside and you have reflectors and rear parking sensors on other sides as well like these fins can move by itself it's pretty nice and now if you look at the car's view from overall to back you can see there's vents going here and here that from the air side so it can ventilate the exhaust manifolds and one more cool feature about this car do you know this car goes to 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 2.9 seconds brilliant right and then if you come to the roof of the car you can see there is a big opening here so the air from the front that comes to the roof it can exit through here and cool down the engine and i talked about everything of this car without a history of ferrari's models so before this car was the sf90 that is still available then there was the fa tributo that is still available and before that it was the 488 tista then the 488 and then the 458 then the f430 and then it goes on but this is the latest generation of ferrari's new car but it's not a hyper car this is the brand new sports car that ferrari released now let me show you the car's engine so now i'm going to open the engine cover of the car that you have to do it from the inside so there's a button on the door so if you just lift this there that opens and the hydraulic struts are going to pick it up so if you guys come closer and open this glass panel there you have the heart of the car so this is where the interesting part comes the car's engine before I talk about the engine, let's talk about the history of Ferrari and this car. Ferrari is an Italian manufacturer that is making race cars and cars that are really fast and grand tourers from a really long time. And they are the best Italian brand in my opinion. The competitor of Ferrari, as you guys know, is Lamborghini and Maserati. But Maserati and Ferrari were together at the time, but now they are apart. But now Ferrari was always making the engines by themselves and they still are but Ferrari was actually making Maserati engines at the time as well. Ferrari is making their latest car that is this. So at that time, the emissions and law were troubling them because they couldn't put a V12, neither a V8 inside their car because now everything's going electric. So they had to make the engine smaller and make 
the car hybrid or plug-in hybrid or electric. So that's why Ferrari were like, we're not gonna make boring cars. Ferrari engineers, in the person that in designed the engine, his name's going to be up there. So he decided to make a high plug-in hybrid V6 engine. So when he designed that, he made a three liter twin turbocharged V6 that is right there, as you can see. If you guys come a little closer, let me just show you the engine real quick. You have Ferrari written on both sides. This is the engine that's at the floor of the car for the weight distribution and it's closer to the cabin for the weight distribution. That's where the engine is. This is where the exhaust manifolds go. So that's the engine, right? Now let's come to the electric motors and everything. So with the engine, this car has a 7.45 kilowatt hour battery that is plug-in hybrid. So you have to charge it or you can use it as a hybrid from the inside of the car. So in total, it makes 819 horsepower that Ferrari tells you. But when you test this car, this car produces 830 horsepower. That is really, really impressive. With the engine, there's an eight-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission that is controlled by your paddle shifters. So it's a manual and automatic together. So that's where the engine comes in for this car. That's why this car is really famous. And one of one in Bangladesh and three in India. Why did I say India? Because they're the closest country that I can compare it to. So now if I come to the engine and more about the power output and stuff, the engine is compared, it's the same as the SF90. But the SF90 gets a four liter V8. This is the same engine, it's just cut off, a liter cut off and two cylinders are cut off because per liter is two cylinders for Ferrari. And with the engine, the electric motor helps up. That's why it's all wheel drive. And you have the eight speed dual clutch automatic transmission that helps the car fully run as fast as possible and most power to the ground as possible as well. So in the engine, the maximum horsepower it can produce is 654 horsepower. And from the battery, the maximum it can produce is 165 horsepower. So total is the combined horsepower that is 830 that Ferrari doesn't claim. Ferrari claims that it produces 819 horsepower and 545 pound feet of torque. If I want to know about Newton meters, it's going to be written down there. That's going to be for the engine. This is where you pour your engine oil. And that's where you, it says Ferrari on top too, and this is actually aluminum. And that's where you pour your radiator fluid. And you can see the engine cover ain't red, but the upper thing is, and it is insulation, so nothing happens. And the glass actually gets really hot, so you have to be very close about that. One thing I forgot is, you can see Ferrari and Shell combined here. So if you want to use any engine oil, please use Shell if you own a Ferrari. Now let's close this because we're done and just tap it. And that's going to be it for the exterior. But before that, you have a push up brake light here. And this is actually a window that is visible from the inside. So when you drive this car, you can listen to the engine so much. But now let's look at the interior of the Ferrari 296 GTB. I'm going to get inside it. Now we are on the interior of the Ferrari 296 GTB. Ferrari has done such a good job at designing the car that it's impressive. Let's start from the dash. First of all, you have your AC vent here. This is how you move it up and down. And overall, the design's incredible. You have the model number here, 296 GTB. That is on all Ferraris, the model number is always here. This is for closing the vent and opening the vent. This is the passenger display that is optional extra. I'm showing you that in a, minute. In a minute. This is for closing this hidden vent that's here. And the full dash is in softest material. You have some oofers here and some twitters there. And then if you come down, you have your lockable glove box with decent amount of room inside there. And this whole place is an Arcantara with a light color. That's nice. Now let's come to the center. You have a phone holder here. You have a cup holder here. This is for your hazard. And this is a classic look because uh, Ferrari manual gear was like this. First, second, third, fourth, and reverse. So this is the digital version of that. That I'm going to show you a little later. Window openers here. This is the key and this is a place to put the key. This is a little storage area with uh, two USB-C types for charging a mobile device. It's actually two USBs. And now let's come to the seats. You have the Ferrari horse here with this full bucket seats and then you have two openings here for your vent so AC can come outside and in. And overall it's a very comfortable seat to sit in and it's powerly adjustable. Now let me show you the upper portion. So you have your vanity mirrors here, mirror with the light. And same for my side, mirror with the no mirror. This is your rear view mirror of the car. And this is for locking the car and unlocking the car. This is for when you open the door, the lights don't turn on. And this is for if someone tries to tow your car, the alarm's going to turn on. And these are the lights. 
robot sites and it's touch sensitive. Now let me show you that screen. So let's turn this on. And there that passenger display turns on. So you can turn this off and turn it on. So this is for, if I press this, this is your climate control for the passenger side. Your wind speed, no, sorry, temperature. Where you want the air, That's this is for your wind speed. So you can control it. It's a little laggy, but it still works. That's what I like about it. So you can put it on one or two. This is auto, this is an outsider coming inside. That's for cooling, this is for your AC vent. I mean your wind speed. This is for where you want the air, AC, and this is for my side. And if we come out of there, you have your seats. This is for your seat controls. So you have ventilated and heated seats on this car. And then if I go back, this is for performance. So you can see the RPM, your speed, G-force, and which gear the driver is while driving. If I go back again, this is for audio, navigation settings, and screen off. That's it. Now if you come to the center, let's come to the gear knob. So we're putting the car in reverse, you just press this button. I have to start the car, I forgot the car is not in start. Now the car is in start. So this is for reverse. It slowly does a nice animation and it goes to reverse. This is for, I'm going to put it on first gear. This is for manual mode, so you can use the paddle. This is for automatic and this is L. So now I'm going to leave it back to neutral. This is your hazard slide, like I mentioned. And now I'm going to show you the car's steering. So when you sit on the driver's side, everything is covered and it's driver focused. Let's come to the steering first. You have carbon fiber treatment here. This is your rev uh, meter. So when you're redlining, this lights up. Then you have leather treatments here where you hold. You have carbon fiber here again. Your paddle shifters are behind the car and it's actually collar mounted and it's in carbon fiber for either side. This is for down, this is for up. These are your hazards. So this is for this side. This is for this side, your integrator, sorry. This is for your high beam and high beam off. This is for auto headlights, this is for the volume. These are your driving modes. So this is compressive. So this is the race mode as you go here. Then you have normal performance. Then you have hybrid. Then you have e-drive. But the car doesn't have enough battery for e-drive. This is your drive modes for the car. This is your drive modes for the battery and engine. So when you put this, this is on CT off. This is race. This is sport. And this is wet. So sport is the comfort mode for Ferrari. This is for the windshield wipers and this is for putting out an auto and manual. And this is for the auto and manual for the windshield wipers. And this is for the configurator for the screen. So if I press this, this turns on too. So this is for the cruise control, this is for voice command, this is for call, receive call or cut call. This is for the seat ventilation and this is for controlling the digital screen. Now let's come to this one. You have an AC vent here with your closer and opener behind it. And this is for my side's wind speed. And now let's come on this side. You have your exterior mirror controller right here in your headlight controls. And this is for the front lift. It actually lifts up and lifts down. And this is your AC vent with your closer and opener. And the steering is tilt and telescopic, fully powered adjustable, as you can see from there. And overall, it's a pretty nice steering to hold on to. Now let's see the car's instrument cluster. So when you get inside of the car it just says ferrari 296 gtb and then when you turn it on so the start button is here fully digital so this is for ignition and then you can see that lights up over there that you didn't see so this is a full digital 13 inch instrument cluster that is really nice in my opinion and because it's ferrari it needs that rpm at the center so you can configure this so for that i'm going to start up the car and there the car turns on so First of all, you have your engine temperatures here. This is for your transmit engine temperature. This is for your transmission temperature. This is for your transmission oil temperature. This is for the AC vent, so your wind speed, auto, no outside air coming inside, and the temperature. This is for your headlights. This is the fuel gauge, so it's on full tank. In full tank, it can go almost 357 mile per. This is for your battery gauge, so it needs to charge up. And then this is for how much miles it can go with only battery power, but the car doesn't have charge now. And this is the outside temperature, this is the time, this is the navigation, so this is east, and this is the seatbelt monitor. And for controlling this screen, I have to do it from this button. So if I turn that on, this vehicle, so if I go on vehicle, I can look at three different views. So this is the start overview, this is for the uh, tire pressure monitor and the engine temperatures. This is for the car's hybrid system, so the powertrain. 
and then this is for your trip information so maximum speed speed this car has gone that's 144 miles average speed is 12 mile per hour and your travel distance and travel time and this is the g-force meter and then if i move this the next screen is your media that is on radio right now and then is your map and then is your that screen again so i'm going to leave it on this because it looks nice and then if you look at this screen this is your rpm it redlines an 8000 rpm this is your mile per hour and kilometer hour and which gear you're in this tells you when it's going on boost and when it's going on charge so when i put it on uh, race mode so you can see this is ct off so traction control off stability control this is race mode this is a uh, sport and ferrari sports mode means comfort mode and this is wet this is for the driving modes of the car so i'm going to keep it on sport and it says sport up there and this is for the hybrid system so you can put it on the normal race mode so it says performance there and then you have normal race mode hybrid and e-drive that's pretty much it for the instrument cluster of the car and then when you turn it off it slowly goes away when you open the door and then when you turn it on this actually lights up and this is for your reverse so when you put it on reverse the reversing camera actually turns into the full screen on the parking cameras and it has adaptive guidelines too back to park and now i'm going to show you the car's door but before that it actually has a heads up display but it's just the mile per hour that it's showing as you can see right there pretty simple now if we come back to the car's steering overall i really like the interior of this car now let's look at the car's door so first of all you have your parking brake here and your park hold then if you go on top of that you have this arc and tire treatment and then you have the headlight controls and the exterior mirror controls and for the front lift then let's come to the door you have your black leather treatment with red stitching and this is for your arc and tire treatment with your black and beige and when i turn it off it sounds gone this is for the door handle for opening it this is your grab handle this is your speaker this is for opening the front fuel tank charging uh, opener three memory seats and you have a little bit of storage area here and this is your manual door opener so if this doesn't work the battery is out you have to use this and that's pretty much it you have your ferrari written here and this is where your seat controls are at and that's going to be pretty much it for the video i'm just going to get my sunglasses real quick and if i come outside the car if you like this review, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And Ferrari should put soft door closes in their car. If you like this review, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to like this video and hit the comment section and write whatever you want about this car and how you think this review was. If you want to be contacted with my social medias, I'm going to put my Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, and Facebook page at the description box. Until then, I will see you next time. Hope you guys like this review and the Ferrari 458 review is coming soon too. Two Ferraris in Bangladesh that are very, very nice and both reviews are coming. Now I'm going to get inside the car. So here and open the door. Here, let's get inside. And here I'm going to go. Put on the brake, pressing the start button. Thank you.